Um, <laughs> preacher, I was wondering if you could give me the, the scripture verse that talks about the importance of having soup coat on. <laughs> I, uh, I've, I've had people preach before at a second opinions chapter four, That's if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Julie, Miss Julie was happy to find out there was going to be coffee in heaven. At least there's coffee in the Bible because, as you see on my table, I wrote a book on James. Well, just before James, there's a book that says no. Hebrews. <laughs> 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 The, <laughs> it is a blessing to be with you. Uh, the book table is back there, and uh, feel free to avail yourself of it. If I'm not there, the uh, m the thing is there just to drop money into, and you're on the honor system. You can't trust a Christian. Who can you trust? Amen. And um, so we're just we're glad for that. And there's uh, there's also don't feel bad if you wanna if you wanna do your Christmas shopping today. I do have more of each one in the car. So the last in the ministry. And uh, when we do what God's called us to do, He tells us what the Word of God tells us. Matthew six thirty three says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you." If you want to know what these things are, all you can do is read the verses before that: the food, the raiment, the things that are necessary. He'll take care of if we put Him first. Amen. And let me just say, I'm not preaching on this this afternoon, but that verse in Philippians four nineteen is based on the same principle. Amen. That's not a blanket promise, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You read that. Paul tells the Philippian believers, you've been faithful in giving to God. You've been faithful in serving to God, God and because you've kept him first, yep. he's going to supply your needs. Yes. That's right. Ephesians chapter 5. In your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 5. Brother Mike got me nervous in Sunday school. He get going, I'm like, easy brother, you're taking all my thunder. And then he, he talked to me in the food line. He says, I don't get what you're saying. He said, I, I didn't hear anything about the Holy Spirit much in that service this morning. I said, well, you just hang on. We're going there this afternoon. Right. Ephesians chapter 5. And uh, as we come into this particular chapter, um, we're going to be... I don't want to scare you. But we're going to be looking... I, won't, I shouldn't say in its entirety, but we're going to be getting a good overview this afternoon of the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And um, as we do that, there are some misconceptions regarding the person of the Holy Spirit. And we'll deal with that as we get into this. Sadly, I, I can't speak for independent Baptists in New England, but I know a little bit about them in the Atlantic region. We're going at extremes. And what I mean by that is this. If somebody teaches something that's contrary to Scripture and we look at it and we see that it's wrong, like for example, you know, there's people that are very heavy on love, is there not? To the point that they don't speak the truth because it might offend somebody. And we're not here to offend, we're here to love, so they don't speak the truth. But then sometimes as independent Baptists, we look at that and we say, that's wrong and we're over here. I'll get my exercise, keep me awake. We're over here and we're all about the truth, but there's no love. Right. Can I say this afternoon that one extreme is just as wrong as the other? Yes, sir. The exact same thing happens in the teaching of the Holy Spirit. The charismaniacs are over here and they've abused. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> they've abused what the Word of God has to say about the Holy Spirit of God. And now over here as Baptists, we've looked at that and we said, that's wrong. And when somebody mentions the Holy Spirit, we go, <laughs> are they one of them? He is a person. And he's got a very real ministry in our lives. Just because there's some people out there that have abused the teaching on the Holy Spirit of God, let's not go to the other extreme and ignore them altogether. Right. That's what this, this is what this passage talks about. And I want to look at, as we look, as we look into this, so I want to see very simply, as Christians, the need that we have in our lives to humbly submit or humbly surrender to the working of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. Before we read the passage, let me say this. 
that which has been begun in the Spirit in your life cannot be made perfect by the flesh. That which was began by the Holy Spirit of God cannot be made complete through the flesh. How many Christians believe that it's by grace through faith that we're saved, but then they think it's up to them to live the Christian life. It's up to them to get the victory that they need. It's up to them to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. No, friends, you need the Holy Spirit of God to save you, and what you need to do is just surrender to Him and His working in your life and allow Him to do what He wants to do in your life. Many Christians are discouraged and defeated today because they're trying to gain spiritual victory through fleshly means. And it can't happen. So with that in mind, let's come to Ephesians chapter 5. I encourage you to stand with me this afternoon so you don't fall asleep. (laughs) Verse 15. Man, this is good stuff. We were in Ephesians this morning in Sunday school. I was mentioning to Brother Mike, if you've never done this, read through the book of Ephesians and pay attention to the prepositions Absolutely. in Ephesians. Awesome study. right? In that alone, it's an awesome study. Yes, Ephesians 5.15 says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine, wearing his excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Bo, would you pray for us, please? Father, we sure do love you this mm-hmm. afternoon, God. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, we thank you for the time we're able to gather together. Now, Lord, I ask God this afternoon that you'll touch Brother Danny. Lord, I pray God you'll preach him. Lord, I pray God you'll give him liberty from on high that only you can give. Lord, open up the ears and the hearts that are in the pew here this afternoon. That, Father, we not think about anything going on around us or outside. Mm. But, Father, we just focus our concentration right here on the Word of God. Yes. And, Lord, we be fully submitted this afternoon, Lord, to your Word and to your Holy Spirit. Lord, touch your preacher. Lord, mm. give him the words. And, Father, I pray <clears throat> that when this day is over, Lord, that you'll change each and every one of us yeah. to walk more as you would have us to. Now, Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As I've already said, I'm fully aware, <clears throat> fully aware that the charismatic movement has corrupted the minds of many when it comes in regard to the filling of the Holy Spirit of God. There are some that would tell you that if you've never spoken in tongues that you're not filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And there's all kinds of weird ideas that are out there. And can I say that it seems like they're getting weirder and weirder as the days go on. Absolutely. Matter of fact, there are some churches now, and I don't even know if I want to talk about this after lunch, but there are some churches now that are even into holy vomiting. And it's all an evidence of the Holy Spirit of God filling a person. Statement. The filling of the Holy Spirit of God does not cause you to do weird and wild things. Exactly right. The filling of the Holy Spirit of God, in 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 layman's terms, very simply, is the Holy Spirit of God giving me the ability every day that I need to live a life that honors and pleases the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you do understand this this morning that you in your flesh cannot please God. Bible makes it very clear in, in black and white. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if I'm going to live a life that is honoring and pleasing to God, and I hope that's your desire because the Bible tells us as believers that, that the bottom line is that we are to live our lives to please Him. So the Holy Spirit of God working in and through us controls me every day so that I can live uh, my life in a way that He wants me to live. And when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit of God, it's going to be manifested through certain areas of my life. Right. We're not there today, but in Galatians chapter 5, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. You know what that means? It means this. It is things that when I'm surrendered to the Holy Spirit of God, and I'm walking in the Spirit, those things are things that the Holy Spirit of God produces in my life. Do you understand, Christian? 
It's not my responsibility to produce those things in my life. It's His responsibility as I surrender to Him. The Bible doesn't call it the fruit of the saint. It calls it the fruit of the Spirit. So we need to be yielded to Him, and when we are, it's going to manifest itself in several areas of our lives. Now, one of the misconceptions that we have, even amongst independent Baptists, when we talk about the filling of the Spirit, some people get the mentality, well, yeah, that filling of the Spirit, that's for evangelists. That's for preachers. That's for missionaries. That's for those, and I even hate to use this word, in full-time Christian service. You know why I hate using that? Because we're all in full-time Christian service. But friends, the filling of the Spirit is not just for the preacher. It's not just for the evangelist. It's not just for the missionary. Now, heaven help the preacher that steps in a pulpit that's controlled by himself rather than the Holy Spirit of God. But friends, the filling of the Spirit is for more than just those people. Every single one of us, every single moment of every single day need the filling of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. You know, many times people are concerned or ought to be concerned if they're Christians with knowing what the will of God is for their lives. And many times when we think about that, we're thinking about the big stuff, are we not? Where does he want me to live? What does he want me to do? Who does he want me to marry? And those are the the things that we think of many times when we think of the will of God. But do you understand when you read the pages of the Word of God that actually when God's Word talks about God's will, that most times it has to do with my character, not with my, geo, not with, not my geographic location or things of that nature? Now, when I am what I need to be, God has no problem steering me where He wants me. But it's interesting, and if you've never done it, uh, and this is total uh, side. St- topic, but it's interesting to study the will of God in the Word of God and what it says about it. You know, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. And there's all kinds of places that God tells us what His will is. What is God's will? Well, the Bible says in verse 18, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. You know, that's the will of God for your life and for my life as a child of God, is to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. You say, preacher, how do you know that? Because I read that verse in the context. Did you see what's just before in verse 17? Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the, of the Lord is. And then right after that, he tells us that it's the will of God for us to be filled right. with the Holy Spirit of God. Friends, what this world needs is not Danny Jack full of Danny Jack. <laughs> what my family needs is not Danny Jack full of Danny Jack. What they need is us as believers filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. Allowing Him to call the shots in our life. Brother Bo does some coaching from what I've picked up reading between the lines on Facebook. You know the Holy Spirit of God wants to be the coach of your life? He wants to be the one that calls the shots. And friends, we, our job is just simply to surrender to Him. So if we're going to understand what the filling of the Spirit is, there are three biblical principles that I want us to look at very quickly. And you guys have learned to take that very tongue-in-cheek, right? <laughs> From an independent Baptist preacher. That's right. I was telling Brother Bo, one of the churches I pastored, somebody, I know you, you, you have a hard time believing this, but somebody accused me of being long-winded. How dare they? And I'm so thankful for a deacon that came to back for me. He came up and he put his arm around me. He said, Preacher, he said, I want you to know you may be long, but you're never winded. (laughs) Praise God for people that have your back. (laughs) Principle number one that I want us to see this afternoon regarding the Holy Spirit, and and this isn't a a be-all and end-all study for the Holy Spirit of God. I know we can't be here all week doing this, but I want to give you three basic principles. Principle number one is this, the indwelling of of the Holy Spirit. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That happens at the moment of salvation. The moment that you bow your knee and confess your need of Jesus Christ and repent of your sin, the Holy Spirit of God comes to live inside of you. 
1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20 says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Which you have of God, and ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God with your body and with your spirit, which are God's. That being said, I need to be careful what I do with God's property. Amen. I'm not mine. Yep. I'm His. Yep. Actually, I'm not once His. I'm twice His. Amen. He made me. He bought me. Amen. I'm His. Amen. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. Friends, if you're here this afternoon and you do not have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God, then you are headed to a Christless hell. That's exactly right. And friends, as we've already looked at today, but let me remind you once again, it is not what you are or what you do that saves you. It is not what you have done that saves you. It is trusting Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ has done that saves you. In John 19.30, Jesus hung upon the cross and He proclaimed, It is finished. I was reading a book by somebody one time. I can't remember who it was now. On the Gospel of John. And uh, now you need to understand that every book that we read goes through the filter of the Word of God if it's not the Word of God. And he said about the phrase, it is finished, that Jesus was declaring that his life on earth at that time was over and that he was dying. No, friends, he did not say, I am finished. He said, it is finished. The price has been paid. The, the way into the presence of God has been made available. And we know that because the veil of the temple was rent from the top to the bottom when he said it is finished and it was the top to the bottom to show us that it was God that did it and not man. The way into his presence is available. I love, if, I, if I only have time to, to share one verse with somebody when I'm sharing the gospel most times at 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Friends, that's the gospel in a nutshell. We should be at the place where we understand Jesus said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So friends, if you're here today and you're not saved, you don't need to worry about how can I get the power of God. What you need to worry about right now is the fact that you're under the judgment of God and you need His forgiveness and you need His free pardon from sin. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in... What? You sure it doesn't say in church? You sure it doesn't say in the baptismal waters? You sure it doesn't say if anyone be in the church membership role? No. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And friends, if you are trusting anything but Christ to get you to heaven, you're not going to heaven. That's right. I'm not going to say a lot about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit this, morning, this afternoon because... We talked about it this morning, what it takes to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. It happens at the moment that you're saved. If there's been a time and a place that you have trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then the Holy Spirit of God is taking up residence in your life. But I want to take some time to look at the second part. So we got the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that's salvation. But then after that indwelling, there needs to be the infilling of the Holy Spirit of God. That's surrender to Him and to His working in my life. Now I understand when I say the infilling, I understand that the Holy Spirit of God is not given by measure and it's not a matter of me getting more of the Holy Spirit. It's a matter of the Holy Spirit of God getting more of Danny Jack. That's right. But with that being said, we must be surrendered to Him. We must be under His control. And there are all kinds of people today that call themselves Christians all over this world who are bound up in fleshly, worldly, anti-Bible living. And it's between them and God whether or not they are saved. But I can guarantee you this, if that's the kind of life that they are living, they are definitely not filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Right. They're not controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit is not doing through them what He desires to do. And I'll stand on the record this afternoon. Afternoon messes up my head big time. 
If I say morning, evening, afternoon, middle of the night, whatever, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll just nod your head and keep on going. Your preacher does the same thing. I listen to him on video too. <laughs> now, where was I going? Oh, yeah. I've heard people talk about people that are lost and being miserable. And I've met some people that are lost and are miserable. But let me tell you this afternoon, based on what I've seen in people's lives, the most miserable person in the world is not a lost person. That's exactly right. Tell it. The most miserable person in the world is the child of God who is not where he ought to be Absolutely. spiritually. Especially if they've been there at one time. The most miserable person is the born-again, blood-bought child of God who lives for themselves and will not surrender their will to the will of Almighty God. And friends, when we surrender to Him, it is then and only then that we can truly enjoy the freedom of fullness of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. People say, well, I don't want to do that because I want to be free to do what I want to do. Christian, you will never be free if you're bound by this world. Right. You'll never be free if you're bound by your sin. You'll never be free if you're bound by your cravings, if you're bound by your worldly passions and your fleshly passions. You can only be free when you surrender your will to the will of Almighty God. It's interesting that this word filled means to be controlled by, to be dictated by, dominated by, or defined by. And it's also a word that is written in the continuous tense. Because you ever notice how easy it is for the old man to take control? We were driving to meetings one day. And I don't know, if I've never had the, the unit down here, but I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of our home away from home. But we've got a, a 40 foot long trailer that we haul behind our three quarter ton diesel truck. We're right about 55 feet long going down the road. And with the truck and trailer contents and us in the truck, we're pushing 20,000 pounds, over 20,000 pounds. Not pushing, I wish we were pushing, that would make it easier on fuel. <laughs> we're pulling over 20, we're, we're, we were driving down to meetings one day and, and my wife, likes to co-pilot with her eyes closed. <laughs> she gets in the car, and she's dri we're driving along, and things are great, and the next thing I know, she's over on the passenger side asleep. And of course, the kids were in the back. They were doing whatever kids do. This was early on in the ministry. And I was driving along down the road, and I didn't really want to play sermons or things like nature because my wife was sleeping and all that fun stuff. hate to think that she was sleeping through a sermon. <laughs> 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 Easy, brother. That wasn't a place to say amen. <laughs> you always have people that say amen in the wrong place, eh? Anyways, we're driving along, and I'm, I'm singing these songs in my head. I'm praying, and I'm on top of the world spiritually. I'm having the time of my life, and I'm driving down, coming into the city of Halifax, and there's this guy that goes by me, and just as he gets by me, he literally almost takes my bumper off, hauls in across in front of me, and takes the exit that's right there. Do you know how quick I went from being filled in the Spirit to, if I could get a hold of his neck... Friends, that's why we need to continually be filled. You know why? Because we're leaky. Yes. Absolutely right. So when it happens, the best thing to do is we can either go on in our miserable ways or we can say, God, here I am at the controls again. And I need to back off and let you have control. Because we know nothing good happens. And as our preacher says, too often we let the old man drive. <laughs> so, here's the question though. If it's God's desire for us to be filled with the Spirit, how can being filled with the Holy Spirit of God be illustrated? Well, God gave us a beautiful illustration in this passage. And I need a little bit of audience participation. I want to make sure you stay awake this afternoon. So I need a little bit of audience participation here to help me in this part of the message, I want to ask a very simple question, and that question is this. How many people here believe that if I were to come in here today and preach 
drunk, slam loaded with alcohol, they got to be out of the will of God. How many in here believe that if you had come to church today completely drunk, that you'd be out of the will of God? I, I, I hope we don't have a hard time getting past that simple truth. You see, the bottom line is, if I come to this pulpit drunk, I'm out of God's will. But, or if you come to this church drunk, you're out of God's will. If you go anywhere drunk, as far as I'm concerned, according to the will of God, or the word of God, you're out of God's will. However, that's the easy part. But the verse doesn't stop there. That's right. How many people believe that if I got in this pulpit not controlled by the Holy Spirit of God, am I of God's will? Ooh, that gets a little harder, doesn't it? How many people believe that if we were to come here today to worship the Lord and we're not filled with the Holy Spirit of God, we're out of God's will? You see, it's easy for us to accept the first part of that verse, isn't it? But how hard is it to accept the second part of that verse where it says, be filled with the Spirit? And there's not a part of that verse to me that looks anything like a suggestion. Because God knows how much we need it. Friends, according to this very same verse, I'm told that I'm out of God's will if I get in this pulpit not controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. And here's the truth. Let me be honest with you. And I hope if you're honest that you'd say the same thing. I need more of the Holy Spirit of God's control in my life every day that I breathe God's air. I want you to understand, and I know Brother Bo has said this many times before, but I want you to understand, when I stand up here and preach on something, it does not mean I've arrived. It does not mean I've figured it out and I'm the be-all and end-all when it comes to this. As a matter of fact, most of my preaching, if I can be honest with you, most of my preaching comes from what God's dealing with me about. Because if it's not speaking to me, how in the name of time am I supposed to speak to anybody else? It's going to work on the preacher before it works on me. That's why it's also important that I make sure I'm getting my sermons from the Holy Spirit of God, not from Google. Because there's some people that do that too. But the interesting thing is that God tells us what the results of being filled with the Holy Spirit are. When I'm filled with the Holy Spirit of God, it will be evidenced in a number of ways in my life. Let me just give you four ways very quickly that's, that's talked about in this passage. First of all, when I am filled with the Holy Spirit of God, it is going to be evidenced by my mouth. Amen. It's going to be evidenced by what I say. It's going to be evidenced by what I talk about. You say, preacher, where do you get that? From the text. Verse 19, right after the verse, it says, be filled with the Spirit. Verse 19 says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And if you look carefully, verse 18 ends with a semicolon, so the thought is continued into verse 19. So when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit of God, it's going to be evidenced in my mouth. Friends, let me remind you today of something that you already know. Your mouth and my mouth has been given to us for two reasons. Reason number one is for the glory of God. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So I need to ask myself the question, the things that I say, are they bringing honor and glory to the Lord or are they bringing dishonor to His name? If they're bringing dishonor to His name, then it's not God's will for me to say it. So my mouth is given to me for the glory of God, but then it's also given to me, secondly, for the good of other people. You ever notice how much we do in independent Baptist churches with our mouth that is not for the glory of God and the good of other people? Right. Gossip, backbiting, mm. tail-bearing. Yes, sir. I don't care how spiritual you want to paint it, or make it sound. Well, it doesn't come from a spirit-filled life. Mm -hmm. God has not called me to tear people down. He's called me to encourage people, to build people up. But yet so often, much of what people do is tearing people down. Let me give you the bottom line. Just, I'll, I'll bring it down as far as I can bring it down. I need to dumb stuff down so I can understand it. It's not for you, it's for me. Right. If I'm involved in doing that stuff, 
I'm not right with God. Because, friends, it will be evidenced in my mouth if I'm filled with God's Spirit. In other words, I'm going to talk about the right kind of things. But not only is filling with the Spirit, not only is it evidenced in my mouth, but it's also evidenced, secondly, by my music. The Bible says in verse 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Friends, if I'm right with God, it's going to be evidenced in my music. Sometimes when I think about this, uh, as I was thinking about this before, and, and I can say this because I really don't know anybody. I mean, I, I, we're all acquaintances and we know each other casually, but I, I really don't know what makes you tick and things of that nature. But when I think about it being filled with the Spirit, evidence by our music, wouldn't it be interesting if we just all went out and turned everybody's car on just to see where the radios were right now? Just to find out what it was that we were listening to on our way to church or what it was when we listened to the other day when we had to go to Bangor. Because the truth of the matter is, friends, when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit of God, it's going to be evidenced by my music. And don't tell me for a moment that I can listen to the right kind of music and it doesn't affect my fellowship with the Lord. Sure. And while we're there, Let's just go here for a moment. Go ahead. We're living in a day and age where people say, well, you know, we need to get away from the hymns. We need to bring in some more modern stuff that will attract people and bring in maybe some worldly music and some things of that nature. Friends, let me say, what you use to get them, you'll have to use to keep yeah. them. And you don't, in doing that, and I know some of this isn't good English, that's okay. I don't use proper English when I'm not writing. <laughs> when we lower our standards and when we compromise, we do not spiritualize the world, we de spiritualize the church. We need to be careful. Thirdly, if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit of God, it will be evidenced in my murmuring. Notice what it says in verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18 says, In everything, or does it say in some things? Everything. In everything give thanks. Why? Notice this. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Did you ever notice? as we think about the idea of being filled with the Holy Spirit of God is evidenced by my murmuring. You ever notice that some people are never happy? <laughs> some people, them and God, are the only ones that are right. And if they're honest, they question God from time to time. Yep. I mean, that sounds humorous, but friends, it's not far from the truth. Matter of fact, it is the truth, sadly, in some people's lives. So we see here that it's evidenced by my murmuring. P friends, these people constantly complain and there is never thankfulness. You know, the, well, first of all, let me give you this foundational principle. Murmuring and thanksgiving don't come from the same lips. Right. And by the way, we're not going to go there, but when we were just talking about our mouth a minute ago, you might want to go back to Proverbs 6 and look at the list of things God hates. Yes. That's exactly right. Do you know that three of the seven things that God says are an abomination to my ears are that little red devil behind the pearly white gates here. Yes, connected directly to it. And many times, those abominable things are things that are happening in our independent Baptist churches. Isn't it sad that so many churches today are full of murmurers and complainers? So being filled with the Spirit is evidenced by my mouth, it's evidenced by my music, it's evidenced by my murmuring, and then also it is evidenced in my marriage. We're not going to, we don't have time to go into all of this, but verses 21 and 22 say, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, wives submit unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, Verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church 
and gave himself for it. We don't have time to preach a whole series on the home, but I, let me just say this. The home is a much better place when the people in the home are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. When God's in control of each individual's life. Now, I can fool you, but my wife knows if I'm filled with Danny Jack or if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Because it comes out in the home more. Because many times when we're on the job or things of that nature, we know we can't get away with what... But when people get home, they, pardon my expression, but they let their hair down. Sure. <laughs> Brother Peter let his hair down one night. <laughs> he's like me, he's got wavy hair, it's waving goodbye. <laughs> Friends, I can't be filled with God and myself at the same time. And wife, the day that you get filled with the Holy Spirit is a day that you'll submit and love your husband the way that you should. And husbands, the day that you're filled with the Holy Spirit is a day that you will love your life as Christ loved the church. You want to study that one out. And you will do for her all that you possibly can. Now, Here's what I want to... Can, can I say this before we move on? <laughs> of course I can. I have the floor. <laughs> Sometimes, many times, in our lives as Christians, we get the cart before the horse. Say, preacher, what are you talking about? We get the cart before the horse. Here's what I mean by that, because it's only... From a scriptural perspective, it's only after this point that the next one happens. But sometimes we get the cart before the horse on this. You see, friends, it is only after we experience the filling of the Holy Spirit, only then can we experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in our churches. The, out, the indwelling is salvation. The infilling is surrender. The outpouring of the Spirit is service. Do you know what our problem is in a lot of Baptist churches today? We're trying to convince people to serve that aren't even filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And we're getting the cart before the horse. You can't get somebody to serve God effectively if they're not first of all filled with the Holy Spirit of God. There are many people today that are seeking to invert these two. But friends, that cannot happen. And when we try to invert the two, we get to the place that we want God to bless us. And we want God to use us. And we want God to do the mighty and the great things in our lives. And we want the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God. But the problem is, we've never really had the filling of the Holy Spirit of God. And you can't have the outpouring till you have the filling. Yep. Now, you can be, and I can be, dictated and dominated by the Scriptures and by the Holy Spirit of God every day. If we could not do it, God would not have commanded us to do it. It is possible through the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Friends, it's only when we surrender our will to God's will that we can be used to turn the world right side up for Jesus Christ. But if we're going to do it, we need Him to be the doer of it and we need Him to work through us. And the only way He can work through us to be outpoured in our community is if we're first of all filled. Yes, sir. I hate the bus bubbles just before I go home. God doesn't use you because you're a wonderful person. God doesn't use you because you're a gifted person. God uses you because you're surrendered to Him. I'll be honest. I pastored for 18 years before I started on this ministry that God called us to. And I'm thankful for that. It gave, it gave me a whole new perspective as an evangelist because I've been in the pastor's shoes. But that being said, 
How many times have we tried to get to the place where people have the mentality that we need more gifted people in our church? No, you need more people that are surrendered to God in your church. You don't need more giftedness. You don't need more talent. There's so many churches today that are saying, oh, we need talent. We need more people that are good singers. We need more good this. We need more good that. Friends, we don't need more talent. We need more of the touch of God on our lives. We need people who will turn their back on the world and fall on their knees before God and acknowledge, God, we need you and we can't advance unless you go with us. And it's not so much, God, that we want you with us. We want to be with you. Friends, we're not trying to get God on our page. We're just getting ourselves on God's page. And what it is that God wants to do. You say... What's the, one of the biggest needs in 2022? This is just me, an outsider looking in, in many people's lives. You know what the biggest need is in 2022? This is deep. You ready? The biggest need in 2022 is for Christians to get their nose out of Facebook and get their nose in God's book. There it is. Where were the people did? Friends, we need to be where God can use us. So let me ask you, Do you want God to bless your life? Do you want God to bless your church? Does the Holy Spirit of God control your mouth? Does He control your music? Does He control your murmuring? Does He control your marriage? Are you sweetly submissive to that which God speaks to your heart about? Isn't it amazing how sometimes we can be so open when God speaks and then other times... It's like we treat God and the Holy Spirit like a potluck lunch. We'll take what we want. We'll walk by what we don't want. God's Word isn't a potluck, friend. If God's right on one thing, He's right on everything. Let God be true and every man a liar. Friends, are you sweetly submissive to that which God speaks to your heart about? Because here's the key. I'm not asking how talented are you. I'm not asking how good can you sing. But if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit of God, you can forget about being used for the glory of God the way God wants to use you. Preached a message a little while ago in our church. Out of Luke 24. It's a passage of Scripture that's overlooked many times. Jesus had told his disciples before he went to the cross, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But here's the part that we miss sometimes. When Jesus rose from the dead, just before he ascended back into heaven, he said this, tarry until you are endued with power from on high. Here's the problem in many Baptist churches. We're going. We're serving. We're singing. We're playing. We're teaching Sunday school. But have we really tarried until we've been endued with power from on high? Are we really doing it in the power and the enabling of the Holy Spirit of God? Or are we just going through the motions, doing what we're capable of doing in the flesh? Because there are some people in churches that can put on a pretty good show. But when I trust myself we get what I'm capable of. But when we trust God and acknowledge that we need Him, we get what He's capable of. That's why we have said over and over again at Amherst Open Bible Baptist Church, and I'm going to say it here, the most important meeting of this church does not happen on Sunday. It happens on Wednesday night. Because there is power in prayer. And there is power in nothing else until there's power in prayer. When we decide that we are not going to pray, by default in our actions, we are saying, God, I don't need you. 
I can do this. That's right. It's a scary place to be. Yep. You see, here's the problem. We've got all kinds of outpouring. But do we really have the infilling? Are we doing it? Through him. Friends, we need people whose sole passion is to know Christ. Philippians 3, verse 10. Paul says, that I may know him. Notice he didn't say that I may know about him. He says that I may know him. Paul, what is it that motivates you? Paul, what is it that enabled you to do what God allowed you to do in your life? I believe Paul would say, because through the duration of my life, my supreme passion was not my service. It was knowing Christ. And listen, friends, if your service to God is not flowing out of knowing Him and walking with Him and that fellowship with Him, the well is going to dry up. That's why it's so important that before there's the outpouring, we make sure there's the infilling that we're filled with the Holy Spirit of God. So let me ask you the question this afternoon, how much of the power of God do you desire? Now, I'm going to say something, and it may shock you at first, but I want you to think about it. Probably longer than we're going to be here, think about it kind of thing, and that's this. If as a Christian, you have no desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, then God has no desire to use you. That's right. That's good, Stop and think about it. If you have no desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, God has no desire to use you. Why? Because He can really only use us when we're surrendered to Him. Yes, sir. Beyond that, if I'm serving in the flesh, most times I'm serving for me to get the credit. Yes. Right. Look what I did. That's right. Look at my class. Look at my church. Yep. Hey, this isn't Pastor Bo's church. Not this is God's church. Amen. I always cringe when I hear somebody talk about my ministry. We had a lady we had to deal with. This is my ministry and I can do what I want to do. Really? Because friends, none of it belongs to me. It's all his. And the only right that I have to do is what He wants me to do. That's right. Let the Lord have His way in your life every day. Amen. There's no rest, there's no peace until the Lord has His way. Place your life in His hand. Rest secure in His plan. Let the Lord, let the Lord have His way. Friends, we'll never reach a wicked world with a wicked church. You don't reach them by being like them. Ooh, let me give you this thought as we close. Little Sally was outside playing with her three dolls. She had those dolls for over three years, and man, if you could see them, it showed. <laughs> Tattered hair, clothes was getting all ripped and old, and things of that nature. And little Sally's out there playing with her dolls, and all of a sudden, her mom, who was working by the sink, looks out, and Sally's in the yard crying. So mom immediately wonders, well, what happened? Did Sally fall down or what's going on? She didn't see the whole thing. So, you know, mom mode is assume the worst, right? Until you know what's really going on. So she goes out and she says, Sally, Sally, what happened? Are you hurt? No, mom, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. Well, Sally, if you're not hurt, then why are you crying? She said, mom, it's these dolls. Mom looked at the dolls and said, well... Sally, I see what you're saying. Those dolls are getting older and they're, they're getting tattered and they're showing their age. She said, why don't we get in the car and we'll go down to Walmart and we'll buy you some new dolls. You can pick out your, some new dolls for you. She says, Mom, she said, that's not it at all. She said, the fact that these dolls look the way they do is an evidence that I love them. I comb their hair I dress them. I take them with me when I go to play. She says, I tuck them in at night. I cover them up with an extra blanket if it's going to be cold. 
She said, they're so dear to me. But she says, Mom, I love them. I love them. I love them. But they never love me back. You know, sometimes when I think of that story, I have to ask myself the question. I wonder if sometimes my Heavenly Father is up in heaven. He says, I put a roof over his head. I put food in his cupboard. I take care of what he needs. I love him. I love him. I love him. But how much does he love me back? Friend, if you're here today, you've never trusted Jesus Christ. The first thing you need is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. You need that internal witness that you belong to him and he belongs to you. But listen, Christian, don't invert the next two. Don't get wrapped up in service to God and not be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's dangerous. It's dangerous for you and it's dangerous for this church. Yep, service is important. But what's more important is you and I being filled with the Holy Spirit of God and doing the one thing that's needful and that's sitting at the feet of Jesus. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word.